Welcome to this week's devotion. Um, I hope you're doing well. Um, so glad that you can join us wherever you're joining us from, whether you're like me in your kind of home um, or whether you're out and about um, on your way somewhere. So glad that you're here today with us. Um, this week in our devotion, we're looking at John chapter 5 and verse 16 onwards. And uh, we find in these verses Jesus's response to being challenged, to being persecuted, being criticised for healing a man on the Sabbath day. And the Jewish leaders um, of Jesus's day, Jesus's day didn't like what Jesus had done, um, but also hated the fact that by Jesus doing this and going on to teach about why he did this, he was actually claiming that he was equal with God and they wanted to get rid of him because of that. And Jesus responds to these critics by reaffirming his identity as God's son and also as God himself. Jesus was so certain and so sure of his identity. He knew that he was loved, um, that he was perfectly one with God the Father, that he carried all authority, that he was entrusted to judge all of mankind, that he was the one who both gave physical life from the dead, but also spiritual life from the dead. And he knew who he was. He was totally secure in his identity. And because he knew who he was, because he knew his identity, he lived it out day by day. Page after page of John's Gospel, we see Jesus living out his identity in the world. And as we become more and more sure of our newfound identity in Jesus, I believe that we will live out that identity in our everyday lives more and more as well. But here's the thing. If you're anything like me, um, you'll find forgetfulness is the thing that trips you up. Remembering who you are and remembering your new identity in Jesus is the reason you find it hard to live in the good of it. Or the other way around to say is that forgetting who we are in Jesus is the reason why we find it hard to live in the good of it. Um, you know, this, this thing over here distracts us or we lose sight of what is true. Um, this thing happened and we forget what God has said over us or that person says that thing about us and we, it kind of cuts us to the heart and we, and we really, really feel hurt by it. And we start thinking to ourselves, maybe that is really who I am. Maybe what God says about me isn't true. And, it, and it's so easy to do, isn't it? I don't know whether you're like me in that way. So my hope, though, for this week's devotion is that it can be a, just a simple tool for you to prompt your memory each day of what your identity is in Jesus. So that by remembering, you may live in the good of it and know the security that that brings. So I just want to encourage you to even grab a pen or a piece of paper. Um, maybe if you're you know, watching this on something other than your phone, you can use your phone notes um, and just actually make some notes of these four things I'm just gonna mention. Um, make notes of them um, and actually use it throughout this week to keep coming back to these four things, to remind yourself of who you are. Meditate on them throughout the week. Start your day each day by going back to this list that you've written down and going, yes, this is who I am. So let me, let me crack on. There's four things that I just want to share with you about your new identity in Jesus. So firstly, is that you are loved by God in the same way that Jesus is loved, you are loved. Did you know that? You are God's beloved child. He has placed all things into your hands. You are in the closest relationship with the Father that is possible, not because of what you've done, but because of what Jesus has done. You are never gonna be pulled away from his loving embrace. Nothing can separate you from the love of God. You are united with Jesus and fully loved. So that's the first thing, you are loved by God. Make note of that. Secondly, is that your old life is dead and gone and you are now united with Jesus in his resurrection. That you have new life in Jesus. Make note of that. You have new life in Jesus. His life is our life. We have the life of God in us. But also because of that, we can now bring life into dead places. We can um, bring life to those who are cut off from God. So make note of that. The second one is that you have new life in Jesus, but also you can bring life to others because of that. 
The third one is that in a miracle of God's grace, you share in Jesus's honour. We saw that in the passage in John 5, that Jesus receives honour from the Father. And if we are united with Jesus, we too receive that honour. We go from being rebels to royalty, from objects of wrath to reigning together with Christ, from lost and orphan to found and treasured children, to, to, to a child who is not rejected or turned away, but a child who is welcomed back and has a ring placed on their finger and a robe draped over our shoulders to say, yeah, this is my honoured child. So that's the third one, is that you share in Jesus's honour. The fourth one is that you share in Jesus's authority. You can speak to sicknesses, to evil spirits, to take authority over them. We can speak as ambassadors of God's eternal kingdom. Wherever you go, wherever your week takes you this week, whether it's at home, whether it's out at work, whether it's kind of hanging out socially with people that you know or spending time with family, whoever you are, if you're in Jesus, whatever circles that you mix in, you bring the kingdom of God. You can pray and believe that your prayers are heard by God, the ruler of all things, and that he loves to answer your prayers. Your prayers carry the authority of heaven. So that's number four, is that you share in Jesus's authority. So these four things are who you are. You are loved by God. How good is that? You are loved by God. But also that you have new life in Jesus, that you share in Jesus's honour, that you share in his authority. This is good news. This is who you are. And surely remembering these truths will change the way that we live. I hope this will be helpful for you throughout this week as a tool. Like I say, write these things down, keep coming back to them, remind yourself of them time and time again, and surely our lives will be different for it. Let me just pray for us. Father, I thank you so much for your great love for us. Thank you, Father, that you have um, placed all things into Jesus' hands, that you have given honour to Jesus and he has all authority, um, but also for us who are united with Jesus in his death and resurrection, that we share these things too. It's such a joy, such a delight, such a privilege to know you, to be known by you, to follow you. Um, we just pray that these things will sink deep into our hearts and that they would shape who we are and the way that we live. For your glory we pray. Amen.